Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,356. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,356 start or the finished file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick 1352, we did this exact topic, look up three items and return to a single cell. Now, our goal is to amend this data set with a new column. But for our system, we have to have company, plant, zip code, and ID as a single item joined together. So we need to look up company, plant, zip code, ID based on the product and return it to this column. Now, back in 1352, we actually saw four awesome examples. But in this video, we assumed that we couldn't have a helper column over here. And we didn't see how to do it with Power Query, which is a great solution if it's a long-term project where you're going to have updating to both tables. Now, both of these ideas for solutions came from our awesome online Excel team. The helper column solution came from Ian at YouTube. And Power Query was suggested by Abhay. All right, let's look at example number one. It is the easiest. We can simply, over in our lookup table, create a formula and join company name. And I'm going to use ampersand and then in double quotes. So I'm going to have a dash and double quote ampersand. And I'm going to actually copy that, Control C. Then I'm going to join it to plant zip. Control V and ID. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now we can see the column isn't quite big enough, but it doesn't particularly matter because when we look it up, this is the column that really needs to be wide enough. Now notice this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the seventh column. So now we can simply do a straight V lookup. I'm going to look up product. Comma, here's my table array. Highlight the entire table. F4, comma, 7, because we're retrieving something from the seventh column. And then, comma, this first column is not sorted, so I'm going to use exact match by putting a 0. Close parentheses. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Go down to the bottom, Control Down Arrow, F2. That is looking good. Escape Control Home to jump up to cell A1. Now we're going to go over and see how to do it with Power Query. And I would tend to use a formula if it's just simply amending this table with a simple extra column. But if it's a long-term solution, meaning the data will change in both tables, and you don't mind an export table because Power Query will create a third table, then this is an awesome solution. Now, in order to use Power Query, you have to convert each one of the tables to an Excel table. And I have done that with a single cell in the table. I already went up to Insert and click Table or used Control T. And I very carefully then went up to Design and named each table. This is F units, and this one here is D lookup table. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to import each one of these one at a time into Power Query as a connection only, and then we'll merge the tables. Now I'm using Excel 2016, so my Power Query is built in on the Data tab. There it is, Get and Transform. If you're in Excel 2010 or 13, you have to download it as an extra tab. I have a cell selected inside my first table, so I select From Table, which is the button you use to get data from Excel into Power Query. Now I can see my name over here. It is fine. Those steps are fine, but I do see that I have date and time as data type. So I'm going to click my icon to change the data type and change it to date. Now I can simply go up to Close and Load, Close and Load 2, and I want this as a connection only. Click Load. There is my first table. Now I'm going to click in a single cell on the second table, and I'm going to use the keyboard Alt-A-P-T. The name looks fine. There are some steps. And I'm going to look at each one of my data types, the icon for decimal, decimal, text, whole number. That's fine, although we could change it to text because that's a zip code. Text and text. Close and load, close and load two only a connection load. 
Now there's our two tables. Now we can merge. When we're merging tables, you have them um, inside Power Query as queries, data, new query, combine queries, and merge. First table will be our F units. The connection between the two tables or the relationship or the item you would look up is the product column in the first table. The second table is going to be our lookup table, and we have to connect it. Now, for Excel people, this type of merge with a connection between the two columns, we would think of it as VLOOKUP. We'd be looking up this item and then finding a match and returning things from over here. In Power Pivot, we'd have a relationship, a one-to-many relationship between the product columns. If we were writing SQL, we'd have from table inner join on DLOOKUP table on the product columns. Now, the join kind is going to be a left outer join. That means we're going to have all from this one and the matching ones from the second. Now I'm going to click OK. And when I click OK, we're going to see the first table here and a new column added with tables. Well, we can actually click off to the side, not on the table, but off to the side. And we can see that, sure enough, for each matching product here, it returns the entire record. Now remember, what we really want is company name, zip code, and ID. So we're going to come up to the Expand button, which appears when you have a table in this column. I'm going to unselect all and select only company, zip code, and ID. These three columns will be added as additional columns to our F units table. Now, I do not want to use original column names, so I uncheck that and click OK. Look at that. Now, we don't really want these. We want to actually create our helper column or our new column for our F sales table where we join all three. I'm going to go up to Add Column. That's what we use in Power Query when we want to create a helper column, Custom Column. I'm going to call this Company Zip Product ID. And now we can create our formula. Now, this formula is going to be the same as we did it in Excel, except for instead of cell references, we'll be using field names. We want company names, so I double click. And then we use the ampersand in double quotes dash and double quotes ampersand. And just like we did in Excel, I'm going to copy that little bit here. Then we want to double click. And we have in square brackets our field name, Control V, double click ID. Now notice if we were in Excel, we'd have relative cell references. If we were over in Power Query, right? We would do the same thing in a helper column there, or what's called a calculated column. And it would know through row context for each one of these field names to get the right record. And similarly over here, those field names will know for each row in our Power Query table to get the actual relative cell references. All right, I'm going to click OK, and there is an error. Now, the error is because over here in Power Query, you have to have the same data types. Notice this was ABC text, and this was text, but that is a whole number. Now, we would have no problem in Excel because Excel can take different data types and join them together as text. Now, instead of changing the data type, which I could, let's take this opportunity to see that we can actually save this, go back and edit previous tables, and when we come back, this will work. Now, before I save this as a connection only right now, I'm going to come over here and name this something like Final F Sales Table and Enter. Now, I'm going to come up to Home, and I'm going to Close and Load, Close and Load 2. And we're going to do a connection for the time being and load. Now, look at that. There it is as a connection. Now, we're going to come back to D Lookup Table, double click. And yes, we should have converted this earlier. I'm going to click on the icon for data type and come down and convert this to text. Now I'm simply going to click this button. It'll load it back as a connection because it was already saved as a connection. Double click and check that out. It is totally working. Now, 
that certainly is something you need to contend with as an Excel user or even a Power Pivot user because our data types have to be the same to make our calculations. Now, actually, we could have gone into our formula in this column and used a data type converter function wrapped around zip code, but we chose to go back and change the original data type. Now, I'm going to click this and change this to text. Now, we don't need the three columns, so I click on the first one, hold Shift, click on the last one, right click, remove columns. Looking good. Our data types are looking good. I'm going to close and load. But wait a second, what's up with that? Yes, I've already loaded it as a connection. So I'm going to load it as a connection. And now I'm going to come over to Final Table, right click, Load To. And now we can change this from Connection Only to Table. I'm going to put this on a new worksheet, click Load. And there we are. Now we can see over here the query actually has 812 rows loaded. That is pretty awesome. Better come down here, double click, call it something like Final F Sales Table, and Enter. All right, that was a lot of fun with joining three items from a lookup table where we used in this video Power Query. And then back on this sheet, we used a helper column and then a straight the lookup function. It's awesome hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Ian and Abhay. We'll see you next video.